Hello and welcome to Chartmill. In this video, I would like to introduce you to a new fundamental investment idea added in Chartmill and based on the strategy of Terry Smith, a respected investor and fund manager from the UK. He is best known as CEO of Fundsmith, an investment firm he founded in 2010. Since then, the fund has achieved a compound annual return of 15.6% after expenses. That gives a total return since inception of 516%. By comparison, the MSCI World Index achieved a total return of 290% over the same period, so Fundsmith's performance can be called quite impressive, knowing that 80% of actively managed funds do worse than the index over a 10-year period. Terry Smith is clearly among the other 20%. Those who delve a bit into Terry Smith's investment strategy quickly notice where he got his inspiration. The similarities to Warren Buffett's approach to value investing are great. Both focus exclusively on highly profitable companies, maximizing their competitive advantage over their industry peers, while still having the opportunity to grow sufficiently. All of this should be driven by a strong management team. The common denominator is, no surprise, Benjamin Graham, the father of value investing. The difference between both of them is the focus on the importance of undervaluation being much less of a factor with quality investors like Terry Smith. Fundsmith's success is due in large part to its impressive performance, but what has undoubtedly also played a role is the way in which mostly complex investment concepts are explained in plain human language. Smith has succeeded in summarizing his approach in three core principles aimed purely at creating long-term capital gains. Only buy quality companies. The criteria are very strict. Only companies with solid balance sheets, predictable and increasing revenues, high returns on employed capital and structurally strong competitive position are considered. Don't overpay for these companies. Bear in mind, this is not the same as cheap. In making this point, the fund manager goes against the stock market wisdom, buy low and sell high. Of course, it is still important to make sure you don't overpay for a stock, but you should be willing to pay a fair price. The quality of a company and its growth potential is much more important than the price you pay for it. This clearly distinguishes Smith from the pure value investor who primarily looks for stocks that quote significantly below their intrinsic value. Do nothing and be patient. This strategy focuses exclusively on the long term. Companies are bought with the intention of keeping them in the portfolio for as long as possible. As such, short term price fluctuations should be ignored. This is the only way to take maximum advantage of the power of exponential growth. In addition to these three core concepts, attention is also paid to sufficient diversification. The companies invested in are active worldwide. However, typical cyclical companies, strongly regulated sectors and companies that need borrowed money are excluded. And this manifests itself in the sectors included in the fundsmith. Smith further suggests relying primarily on one's own analysis and research and allowing oneself to be influenced as little as possible by all manner of market trends, news or bold predictions. Now let's take a look at the specific Terry Smith screener settings in Chartmill to find companies that meet the basic criteria. Let's start with cash conversion. At least 90% of EBITDA is converted into cash flow. This ratio provides insight into the extent to which the company is able to effectively convert profits into cash. The stronger this ratio, the easier it is for the company to pay its short-term financial obligations, all debts within one year. Moreover, in times of economic difficulty, such companies will be more resilient to weather this period and are best positioned to reinvest in growth when the economy recovers. Free cash flow. In the last five years, the free cash flow has grown. Quality investors focus on companies with rising profits, and this is precisely why the free cash flow growth ratio is retained. After all, when it increases, due to more income, reducing costs, etc., this is often a prelude to higher profits. In order to avoid making the screen too strict, we do not impose a minimum percentage. We only require growth. Return on capital employed, a 5-year average return on capital employed of at least 15%. Return on capital employed is a profitability ratio that calculates how much profit, before interest and taxes, the company can generate with the capital it uses. A high ratio is evidence that a company is using capital efficiently. As for a lot of ratios, this becomes especially interesting if this key number shows growth over several years. It is evidence that value is indeed being created for investors. That's why here too we consider the 5-year average. 
Price to free cash flow. Price to free cash flow is maximum 30. Despite the fact that quality investors are not necessarily looking for cheap stocks, that does not mean they are willing to pay just any price. This indicator tells exactly how much you pay for each dollar of free cash flow. Highly overvalued stocks are always to be avoided. Still, one should not only look at a low price to free cash flow, a slightly higher ratio can be perfectly justifiable in highly profitable companies. It may indicate that investors are willing to pay a premium now because free cash flow is expected to continue growing solidly in the future. A maximum price to free cash flow ratio of 30 corresponds to a free cash flow yield of 3.33%. Although this filter deserves some nuance, in this video, where Terry Smith elaborates on the free cash flow yield, he states that he demands a return of at least 1% above the expected rate of inflation. For further details, we would like to refer you to the specific video, starting at 3 minutes and 14 seconds. A link to the video can be found below, so in that sense, the filter will have to be adjusted according to current market conditions and inflation rates. Sectors included industrials, consumer discretionary, consumer staples, healthcare, information technology, communication services, and excluded financial services, utilities, energy, materials, and real estate. Next, gross margin and operating margin. So for the gross margin, at least 55%. Gross margin tells something about profitability and provides insight into how price is set and how the company keeps its costs manageable. It is an ideal parameter for comparing companies because revenue is compared after deducting the costs necessary to get the goods sold. The higher the margin, the better. An operating margin of at least 20% and compared to gross margin, our variable costs are taken into account in this case, yet before interest and taxes. Interest coverage at least 10 times. The interest coverage represents how often interest expenses can be paid with operating income. The formula is simple, operating income divided by interest expense. It is a measure of how much profit before interest and taxes can decrease without the company getting into financial difficulty. Acceptable to good is a figure between at least three and five. In this case, we require a multiple of 10. Debt to free cash flow. So the debt is less than five times the free cash flow. Debt to free cash flow is a financial ratio that compares a company's total debt to its free cash flow. It indicates the ability of a company to pay off its debt using the cash it generates from its operations. It shows how many years it will take to repay all outstanding debts with the current free cash flow. And 0 to 5 years is a good acceptable ratio for quality companies. And finally, a market capitalization filter of at least 300 million to exclude really small companies. A quick look at the results today shows that in our database of more than 22,000 tickets, including ETFs, there are only 25 companies that qualify, indicating that the criteria used are very strict. And if we further refine the selection to only US stocks, barely 12 companies remain. But among them are some very well-known names, such as Google, Cisco Systems, Garmin and Fortinet. The filter screen is available as a trading idea and chart wall. To do so, open the main menu in the left sidebar. Click on Trading Ideas. On the next page, select Fundamental Only, Quality Investing and Chart Mill Only. And here you will find the Terry Smith screen along with several other quality screens. So if there are any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to be automatically notified of upcoming videos. Thanks for watching. Until next time.